Whilst we wait for the full reveal of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, here's everything we know so far. It is going to be a brand new open world Zombies experience, so not the traditional round base that's going to be set on the largest map that Zombies has ever been on. We got to see a small preview of it during the cutscene, where on this tablet, for a brief moment, we can see the section that Zakaev created when he threw the vial of Ethereum. Leading up to the trailer's release, there were a few marketing teasers that contained a section of the actual map itself. And thanks to Twitter users Killistige and Z underscore Krim, you can overlay this section of the map perfectly on the last Almas map, confirming that this is what the Zombies map is going to look like. And just as I saw early from Sledgehammer Games, it is Las Almas, but with a desert theme. So I think the map's been renamed and is actually based on Urzikstan, as there was also a teaser text sent that abbreviated the location of the Zombies map with UR, which must be short for Urzikstan. And this Zombies mode is taking place 40 years after the events of Black Ops Cold War, where we have a new enemy, Viktor Sakaev, who steals the last known quantities of of Ethereum to try and weaponize it. Now, the location of these vials are within a machine that is connected to the four members of Requiem, that being Weaver, Gray, Carver, and Strauss. All four members of Requiem are dead at this point, but I have a sneaking suspicion that they aren't quite dead, as there is a mystery we just can't solve yet as to why all four of them are together holding hands connected to this machine. Although their fates were shown to us at the end of Forsaken and Black Ops Cold War, but the Forsaken showed a vision saying this is what our future will look like if we defeat him. The only currently known surviving character from Cold War Zombies is Sergei Ravanov, who returns here 40 years after Black Ops Cold War to assist us along with Soap McTavish and Kate Laswell as part of Operation Deadbolt. Now, the high-level vision of the mode is it's combining the Modern Warfare game systems and features with everything you come to expect from the traditional Treyarch Zombies experience. Now, Zombies is usually capped at four players, but in this game mode, it is now up to 24 players all roaming this massive world at the same time, with squad size is starting at four players but can go up to a max of six and unlike dmz this is going to be a pure pve experience so you'll be joining forces with other random players in the game rather than fighting against them so if this isn't a round base experience then how exactly is the game loop going to work but well, the core gameplay loop is that it's an extraction based loop where you'll be jumping into the zombies map and you'll be completing missions contracts and other activities to earn essence which is the in-game currency for points which will allow you to upgrade yourself in all the traditional zombies ways such as buying perks and pack a punching to increase the firepower against the undead. Now drawing comparisons to Outbreak you spawned into a world and you could do whatever you want roamed any part. Modern Warfare Zombies is going to work very differently as you're going to spawn on the very edges of the map and it's only when you've started to explore this outer portion area that you start in start to get weapons perks and upgrades where you'll then be able to navigate and explore and push further into the inner portions and then the central portion of the map. Each game of Modern Warfare Zombies will only last one hour, so you have a whole hour to navigate, explore, and push into the map before the Aether Storm, which is located somewhere on the map, begins to spread and consume the entire map. So you'll need to exfil before the Aether Storm completely consumes the map. When you first start on the outer portions of the map, you'll have to deal with very easy to take down zombie hordes, which will just be the regular zombies, but you'll also have a human faction that will also pose as an AI threat that will be targeting you that you'll have to take out on top of zombies. And there is a story reason tied to this, which we'll go into in a moment. But as you progress and go into the medium threat zones, areas of the map will start to become a little less safe. And you'll also have to deal with that human faction on top of special zombies and the regular zombie hordes. But the ultimate goal of making it to the central portion of the map is where you'll enter a high threat zone where there will be no human AI attacking you, but simply just the toughest of zombies, including a elite zombies and potentially boss zombies as well. Zombie presence is going to escalate as you move from a low to medium to high threat zone. But each zone will contain increasingly valuable loot that you'll want to safely extract out the game with. Because just like DMZ, the idea of the mode is that you are going to need to exfil and take some of the things you found from a previous game into your next game in order to further advance towards that high threat zone in the center of the map. As that central point of the map is what Treyarch calling the original point of the incursion where you'll be able to advance the storyline within Modern Warfare 3 and earn rewards for doing so. Throughout the Modern Warfare 3 Zombies map there are going to
going to be many different map elements such as encampments, strongholds, and fortresses. Now, most of us are familiar with strongholds within Warzone, and by the sounds of it, these are all going to be very similar mechanics, where an area is going to contain a stronghold that you're going to unlock. There's going to be a ton of strong zombies within, which may include a boss, and once you've taken that out, you'll be given some special unique rewards as reward for taking down that massive challenge. Now, fortresses sounds like a large-scale version of strongholds, which sounds exciting, and encampments sounds like real-life bases that other human survivors may have created, which could be part of that human faction AI, where rather than killing zombies, you'll be killing the human AI in their own encampment in order to take their loot and rewards to help you out in your game. Some of the rewards that were shown during the briefing include perks such as a juggernaut can and a death perception can, meaning rather than just buying the perks outright, you can come across these cans in the world and either choose to drink them and get their effects within that particular game or exfil with them and take them in in a future run. But not only that, but there was a concept called a ray gun weapon case, which looked a lot like a weapon case from DMZ, which will literally give you the ray gun if you come across it. You can choose to use that in your game and have the ray gun. And if you exfil with it, I'm assuming you can take it in. But if not, you can save the case, exfil with it, and then you can bring it in on your next game so you can start a game with a ray gun. On top of that, the return of the brain rot ammo mod and the napalm burst ammo mod is what we've seen. So you'll be rewarded with the alternate ammo types to use in game. And the last reward we saw was refined Ethereum crystals. All of these items are coming under what Treyarch are calling acquisitions. So the idea is as you complete contracts and explore the world, you come across these acquisitions and you can choose to in the moment use it and gain the powerful properties or exfil with it. At the start of your next game, you can choose any of those things to bring in with you to get a head start and get further into the match within that hour. And there's another element to this, which is called schematic. So if you exfil, finding a schematic within your play session, it will give you the ability to permanently craft one of those acquisitions on a cooldown in the main menu. So what that means is you'll always be able to go in and create a juggernaut can and bring it in with you, which rewards those that have invested more time in playing the mode to be able to start their game with having absolutely everything. So from a grind aspect, it sounds like you're going to have to invest a ton of time in order to really unlock absolutely everything. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into the storyline to catch you up to speed. Going off what we said at the start of the video, the main premise of the story is that a mercenary group called Terminus Outcomes led by Viktor Zakayev have stolen the last known quantities of Ethereum and want to weaponize it. Storing the two vials in a secure container, they try to leave only to find that the local security forces have raised the alarm and military police have sent in reinforcements. The firefight that incurs is explosive and bloody and Zakayev's forces are severely outnumbered, so Zakayev uses one of the vials to escape and in the process creates an incursion in the area as zombies begin to infect and spread across the region. Far from fearful, Zakayev smiles as he realizes that this weapon is like no other he could possibly have conceived. A few weeks have passed since this event and a helicopter descends onto the area of the outbreak as SSO Kate Laswell and Sergeant Johnny So McTavish brief us on the mission at hand codenamed Operation Deadbolt and accompanying the team is Captain Sergei Ravanov, an operator and mission specialist with experience with this kind of incursion back in the 80s. Leading us on the ground once we land in Urzikstan is a character called SSO Sarah Green. Now nothing more is known about her at this point, but she must have an incredible amount of experience to have dealt with this situation on her own, living on the ground for several weeks, and has to understand and know more about the zombies and the way that the dark ether works than what we first initially expect. But there are a few unknowns that we can discuss. The first being the potential that with a massive player count now within Zombies, we can expect to see some sort of Destiny style boss fights, where there will be boss fights that are so big that it will require more than just one team of four or even one team of six in order to beat. Call of Duty Zombies really evolved in Black Ops 3 with the introduction of boss battles and ever since then, scale of them has increased ever so slightly, but I feel this is the perfect next evolution of boss fights within Zombies. Just the idea of multiple squads in a single zombies game having to come together as a team in order to take down a massive threat I think just sounds incredible. Biggest we've seen to date in Call of Duty Zombies has been the order bosses in Outbreak that were just freely roaming around the map that you could choose to completely ignore or take down as a team which I thought was awesome. I'd love to see this return but on a bigger scale with more bosses and with the back history of different zombie types that could theoretically exist from the Dark Aether coming 
back. There could be a ton of throwback zombie types that we could see here as well, which is a really exciting prospect. Now, another big topic of discussion when it comes to any Call of Duty Zombies experience is the Easter eggs. And so far, we know that this mode itself is going to be broken down into three different acts, which will all be led by missions layered on that progress the storyline and have several characters and handlers that will communicate with you as you move through the missions and experience the content within the mode. And at the end of each act, there's going to be a special mission that will transition you from the big map to a completely different, smaller version of the map where they're able to tell a more crafted experience where the sandbox elements will be dialed down and you'll be doing some very unique bespoke activities that are tied to that moment, which when completed will reward you with cinematics that reinforce the major story developments and of course the rewards. But I don't think this will be the Easter egg quests quote unquote, but that will be something completely separate. And imagine how incredible it would be where it would require all four 24 players in a single zombies game having to complete certain puzzles in different parts of the map all at the same time. And then all 24 players coming together to take down one massive boss. The scale at which they could take zombies with this mode could be something that has never been seen before and is a very exciting evolution. We don't have too much longer to wait until we see it fully revealed as it will be happening on October 5th at COD Next. I will be attending COD Next in LA and at this moment in time, I do not know know if zombies itself will be playable at cod next all we know is that it's going to be revealed there but i'll have absolutely everything covering the reveal on my channel as it happens if you haven't already you need to subscribe to this channel and leave a like rating if you learned something new